Hello and welcome to the video. We're told in the future that artificial intelligence will take over the world, and that in fact may well be the case. But in the meantime, we can get artificial intelligence to help us with our genealogy and family history research. So in this video, I'm going to look at eight routine family history tasks and see how artificial intelligence can take some of the boredom and routine out of those tasks. In this case, I'll be using ChatGPT, but there are a number of other artificial intelligence engines around. So let's look at the first task, where we all start, which will be research planning. After creating an account with ChatGPT and logging in, I asked ChatGPT to create me a research plan for family history research in New York in the early 1900s. A fairly standard question. And it's come back with a very, very good 10 point plan, one you would see as a really good starting point. So now we have the plan, the next thing would be to do is to ask ChatGPT to provide the sources that I can use to execute the plan. So in this case, um, we'll move from New York to Boston and ask the ChatGPT to provide sources for research in Boston, Massachusetts. After typing the question, we can see the answers come back in a very, very complete format, starting with what we'd expect in census survival records and giving probate and publication records too. In fact, some of them are specific to Boston. So again, a very good start for somebody who's trying to build their genealogy experience. So let's stay in Boston. ChatGPT suggested we go and find some vital records. So part of the battle of the genealogist is knowing where to find these records. So let's ask ChatGPT where I can find vital records in Boston. And you can see, it comes back with specific addresses, even opening hours of where I should go and physically look for these uh, vital records. Next, let's look where we could maybe find online records because that's the second half and probably the most useful tool for most genealogists now is to know what's available online. Well, we're really on a roll now with ChatGPT. We've created the plan, we've found the sources, we've found the locations. Next is to look for online sources. But before we do that, I've got a quick favor to ask. If you're enjoying this video and like the content, please like and subscribe and share this video on my channel. It helps me to know I'm making content that resonates with my audience. But on to online sources. Let's change things up a little bit. Let's ask ChatGPT about Irish immigration sources, which would be appropriate maybe to the Boston area anyway, and, and let me know what online resources are available for me to do my Irish research. So as normal, after typing in the question, ChatGPT starts with the broad sites that I can go and look at and finishes up with some more specific sites for Irish genealogy, which is very good. Next, we're going to change something up completely differently. We're going to ask ChatGPT to build me a family tree. And that's really pushing the text generation capabilities of the tool. How this worked directly in ChatGPT probably wouldn't achieve a lot because all you'd see is me loading a whole bunch of text up. So what I did is I loaded this, this list of family members of Ernest Hemingway, I think it was about 17. It wasn't a great list with some basic vital details of them. And I asked uh, ChatGPT to create me a family tree. And this is what it looks like. It's very, very basic, um, but obviously the capabilities of this tool will improve as time goes on. And it's very, very surprising, I guess, that it has the logic to look through a list of names and do all the mathematical calculations in a chat engine to come about on a family tree. So that's pretty good. Uh, we'll move to another subject now which is just as complex, which is DNA. And this is on all genealogists' mind, how we connect DNA to our family tree. So let's see how ChatGPT will handle DNA type questions. I've posed two fairly simple DNA type questions to ChatGPT. And again, there may be better AI engines to deal with this kind of complexity, but these are very simple questions. How much DNA do I share with my second cousin uh, which is a very simple question and a, a very simple answer as you can see here now. And what I see quite often on Facebook and places like that is how can I submit a DNA sample for somebody else? 
And we should note here, which is very interesting, that ChatGPT is actually pointed out when its information was valid from, which is September 2021. That's what ChatGPT indicates is the cutoff date for the IE engine. And we do know that Ancestry has changed their rules since then. But nevertheless, the step-by-step -step approach is correct. And ChatGPT can answer most narrative questions about DNA without looking at detailed research topics. So if you've got questions about Y DNA or X DNA or mitochondrial DNA, ChatGPT will be able to answer them. Documentation is an important part of genealogy. In fact, without documenting things correctly, we can't really prove our results. So documentation and citations are a key element that we need to understand. Now certainly documentation is what a chat GPT type AI engine was designed to do. But first I wanted to ask chat GPT whether it could understand where to put references. So rather than type again all this into chat GPT and what you, what you scroll by, here are some slides I created. I actually created a, a paragraph for one of my reports. I made sure it was fully referenced. And then I asked chat GPT to tell me where it should be referenced. And it made, did very, very well. It found every sentence that needed a reference. So I took that very same sentence and asked ChatGPT to improve it. Now, there's lots of words that you can use in ChatGPT, like summarize, improve, give me a statement. Any of those words will it change the text you presented, but it's always important to go back, never use anything directly from ChatGPT. Go back and, and correct it into an a narration and text that you feel comfortable with. Now finally, another neat feature of a chat engine, and all chat engines can do this, is I can turn my text to bullet points, or I can turn bullet points to text. And here is again the very same paragraph turned into bullet points. So this is an amazing part of ChatGPT. It's what's been used by many students and writers, and uh, it will really improve your output in terms of your genealogy. And finally, something we all face from time to time as genealogists, the dreaded brick wall. We've done all our research, but we can't get any further. Again, this is an area we can use artificial intelligence, specifically chat GPT, to ask what the next steps could be in our research. So in this example, I've typed in, I've uh, found a family immigrating from Italy to the US in 1910, but now I've lost track of them. And chat GPT suggests steps I can take to maybe pick up the trail again. And again, as all these questions go, I can keep refining the questions. So that's the final outlook of the eight things we can look at ChatGPT for. I hope you found this video informative. And if you've got any other areas that ChatGPT can help you, please let me know in the comments. But in the meantime, have a great day. Use artificial intelligence in your genealogy research and your family history studies because it really, really will help you. It's not going to take over the world just yet. Have a great day.